Hi guys and welcome to another episode on HH code tube amplifier restoration series. So every evening when I was coming back from work I was doing some bits and pieces on it and it turned back really well and actually it's working nice now. I needed to do some modification from the schematics and deviations because to, due to the power transformer and few other things that involve and I think it's time to do some uh, test and measurements. And speaking about test and measurements, let me say a big thanks to the sponsor of this video, Owen. Owen is a company which manufacturing high quality test and measurement equipment. They producing a various range of oscilloscopes, entry level and professional oscilloscopes, with two channels and four channels. They also manufacturing bench power supplies with various voltage range and current depending on your needs. And definitely you might need a digital multimeter on your working bench and Owen have a various range of these multimeters. And I will run some tests on this tube amplifier using one of them function signal generators. And definitely you can find various range of function generators from Owen according to your needs. And you can find more information about Owen and them products checking the links on the description down below. Now we're gonna come closer with the camera to my working bench and show you the bits and pieces what I did so far. If you watched already the previous episode you noticed that I tested and it was a hum and I was blaming the transformer because it was not powerful enough and then I also show in that episode that I design a transformer for this amplifier which I receive it and it's already installed there if you don't see that episode I'm gonna put it up there and have a look what's going on in that episode then what happened with the transformer what I designed and I designed it with dual 385 volts AC and comes when I power it is 420 volts so it's quite high for these tubes here so what I needed to do I needed to order two capacitor rated 600 volts because the capacitors here are just 550 and after the tube rectifier I was getting like 570 volts each definitely will gonna blow that capacitor so I have 600 capacitors that come from the tube rectifier resistor and capacitors then from the capacitor I run to a voltage regulator which I designed it as well because this transformer I couldn't open to, to take down some uh, widening in order to reduce the voltage because it was a sock on uh, that kind of solution in order to keep all the transformer to don't uh, have any noise when you power it so practically what I got here I have a MOSFET a high voltage MOSFET some uh, Zener diodes and few resistors which are regulating the voltage from four, for, from 570 almost down to 468 470 volts which is good for these uh, tubes over here then from this one I'm passing back to the normal tubes which are rated 400, uh, 550 volts which are supplying everything and then I did all the voltages correctly for the preamplifier stage uh, driving stage and power tube stage and believe me or not it's really sounding nice now there is no more that harm which I blame the transformer the previous transformer and it's correct anyway we're gonna do also a sound test first to see how sound and we're gonna run some oscilloscope test and I'm gonna inject from the Owen model DG2035 signal generator some signal in and we're gonna measure the power that it can deliver this amplifier and yeah this is what I did anyway also I need I measured few of these capacitors the yellow ones over here and then also these ceramics some of them they measure high so when the capacitor measure high this means they are old and definitely it's worth to change it then also what I designed because this transformer now powering the front tubes the a entry stage powering with 12 volts and parallel all the heating elements I needed to design to put this resistor to drop a bit of the current because it was a bit of high as it was like 13 point something volts and then I design if you can see here I have two resistor four resistor and one capacitor and to make it really no harm at all from the input stage 
Actually, let me connect some speakers. Let me give first a sound test and then we'll carry on with the actual oscilloscope test. So I connected the same speaker also from the last test that I did. And here we go, everything is ready. The signal also cable is connected. But maybe you notice that it's missing the rectifier tubes. Yes. And I'm gonna tell you what happened with it. Because this transformer now is quite high voltage. It's reaching the maximum pl plate voltage that you can apply to it. And now the, the amplifier is more powerful and draw more milliamps. So the other tube that was there died. When I push to the max volume, completely fireworks inside of the tube. And here comes this one what I designed. So as you can see here, I designed a rectifier tube. Only that it's not tube, it's a solid state. So practically what is do this one, so it's rectifying the voltage has a resistor to charge slowly the big, the first capacitors and then has a timer with 555 and relay after maybe 18 seconds short that resistor and let all the power to come to the capacitors. So let me put it in and let me put a song on this amplifier and let's see the difference from the other episode. So we are going to record in stereo mode because uh, you, as you can see I set up uh, speaker with microphone, speaker with microphone. The amplifier you can see is on, the light is on over there, there is no noise at all, as you can see there is no any noise going on. And uh, let me just uh, play a song, it will gonna be a jazz provided by YouTube audio library. So let's begin. As you can see I reduce the bass only in one channel. I reduce the bass also in the second channel. I reduce the highs on one channel. I reduce the highs also in the second channel. This should be the balance. As you can see I set up already the dummy load over here, the resistors, and I hook up the probes from the oscilloscope. I already also connected uh, to my um, signal generator, so let's run now some tests. To run this test I'm using the DGE2035 signal generator from O1, and then I'm using also the oscilloscope same from O1 DS7102. The signal generator is uh, set up to on channel 2 to 1 kilohertz with 1.070 volt RMS. So let's turn on to see what is doing over there. So I can see here we have uh, 15 volts power output RMS. So this means that if I do a calculation, let me find the calculator over here and to do a calculation. So if we have uh, 15 volts we say so let's put uh, 15 volts times 15 equals and this one it will gonna be divided by the resistor so divide by 8 ohms which is here. So we are taking out RMS 28 watt power RMS at 1 kilohertz.
which is really cool because if now I increase more it will gonna start I can see it's already flooding up at the bottom and in the top so with 1.070 volt RMS we are getting 28 watt RMS power into 8 ohm imagine in 4 ohm how much it will gonna be definitely that's why the tube rectifier didn't uh, handle it that uh, power so we are in channel 1 with the signal generator and set up for a sweep mode from 20 Hz to 1 kHz over there with the same amplitude of 1.070 volts RMS so let me press the button and see how it's handling the low frequency this amplifier so we can see the low frequency is handling not very well because our tubes, tubes like mids and uh, yeah looks like now around uh, 300 hertz we reach like uh, 12 volts rms let's see how it's handling so now looks like it reached the peak of uh, the maximum uh, voltage rms on the output which is almost 15 volts over there and we are about uh, 700 kilo, uh, 700 hertz. Sorry. And we are about to reach now one kilohertz. So we are on same. Here is staying flat, continuously flat. So it looks like it's flat, starting around uh, 400 hertz to one kilohertz. It was flat. So let me now set up for. Um, other uh, frequency sweep and we're gonna run another sweep so it's set up now from 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz and uh, let's see how it's handling this frequency on so now we can see the voltage is dropping a bit over here and maybe you can hear the sound of the resistors <laughs> Yeah, looks like it's not properly flat, it's going a bit down. And bear in mind I'm doing this uh, test with the potentiometer on mid. So the tone correction, potentiometer low, the bus and the treble are on, on middle point. So looks like uh, here there is uh, a difference between channels, a bit quite high, 3 volts RMS between the channels on this frequency. So this means the tubes are um, not the same age maybe, maybe one is older than the other one. About that one I cannot say. About the output, uh, old 4 power tubes are all new, so on that ones, and say that are also match it, pair match it. Maybe the drivers, the preamp also are all new, so I don't think so also in preamp there is a problem. As I mentioned maybe for the capacitors that I need to change them and I'm gonna run again this test after I'm gonna change the capacitor on another episode, not in this one definitely. Now let's set up to run a test from uh, 10 kHz to 20 kHz. Okay, so let's set up for the last sweep from 10 kHz to 20 kHz. So to set up that one I press the start frequency counter. And I'm gonna do 10. You can see here kilohertz. I'm gonna choose the kilohertz. Then I'm gonna go to stop frequency, which is this one. And I'm gonna do 20. And then I'm gonna choose again kilohertz over here. And then make sure it's on the output. And let's now press start. So definitely I need to check the tubes to swap from a channel to channel to understand which tube would do that one because if you can see there is a big difference in voltage. This one is staying 8, this one dropped 9 now, it was in 10. So yeah, definitely I need to check the tubes. That one is definitely the tubes or the capacitor that I need to change. Now looks like in this frequency in 14 kilohertz looks like uh, the same output uh, power. Let's see until the end. 16 kilohertz now. 16 kilohertz looks like are the same power. 
some frequency maybe one look see now this one drop a bit of one volt almost so yeah I need to swap the tubes do run more tests like that to understand which tube doesn't handle the power how it should be okay so finish also this sweep mode okay guys so let me know in the comments down below what are your thoughts about the test that I run and uh, what do you think how is handling the frequency this amplifier because we saw that there is not the same balance on the channels and I don't touch any buttons over here it's all set up on mid all the potentiometer mid only the volume port on max and as I say I already measure few of the capacitors over here they measure a bit high so they are really old especially this one see also the writing on it is already gone so I receive few of the capacitors that we're gonna go replenish so definitely these two they're gonna be replenished with something like these ones these small capacitors over there they are gonna be replenished with uh, something like these ones because I uh, order few of them because I don't want anymore to have any ceramic capacitor over here so the ceramics they are gonna be replenished by this kind of Wimas or for sure are all of them on 630 volts uh, I choose them the capacitors and then I have uh, these capacitors are the 0 0.15 are for this four here so I choose two options on this one so I choose this kind of Wilmots like that and this one so I'm gonna see which one sound better because this one are for the tone correction over there so they are gonna replenish those four capacitors as you can see here there is two and two then I have uh, this one at 0 0.22 which they are gonna replenish over here 0 0.22 I have one two and then there is another two connected to the volume port so these four are for those ones then uh, these two definitely are swapping those ones yeah these ones are swapping those ones and these ones here they swapping I believe uh, which one I choose ah, I have some other capacitor on the panel down there here so this one they were gonna swap those ones over there no I know two swapping those two and two swapping those two so I think this one has a those one and this one but I have also some capacitor down there and I believe for down there are these two again two Wima and then these one are all 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 capacitors they were gonna be all these ones that goes in yeah please let me in the comment down below what do you think about changing these capacitors and uh, I'm gonna see after changing we're gonna do the next episode the final one when I'm gonna run again the test and I'm gonna see how it sound with the new capacitors if you enjoy this video don't forget to give me a like over there and also please subscribe activate the notification bell to see you on my next projects and my next episode of this amplifier so until the next video guys, have a good day and bye bye.